Circuit Python pals, this is Prof G, and in this crossover episode of Circuit Python School and Raspberry Pi School, I hope that you are ready to pound on that pie and get percussive. Because in this lesson, we're gonna build a Raspberry Pi touch based drum board. <laughs> Now we're going to be using the Adafruit MPR12112 pad capacitive touch sensor. We'll use the StemiQT version and we'll attach that directly to the StemiQT wiring that we added in the previous video. And we'll see how we can easily reuse the sound code we've already written. Now this lesson will also set us up for a future lesson where we'll learn to play simultaneous sounds and create a DJ board. So let's rock! Now for everyone watching this video, I'm assuming that you followed our earlier Raspberry Pi school tutorials, or at a minimum, you've got a Raspberry Pi configured, you've installed Blinka to run CircuitPython, you can transfer files from your PC or your Mac to your Raspberry Pi, you've installed Pi Game and it played sound, and you've set up your Pi so that it has a StemiQT port. If not, check out the earlier videos in Raspberry Pi school, those should be what any newbie would need to catch up to where we are now. Now for everyone else, we're going to use our Raspberry Pi, our speaker, Stemma QT port, the MPR121 capacitive touch board, and a bunch of alligator clips, all components that my students have in their physical computing course, to build these projects. Now in my simple build, I've actually clipped the alligator clips to the pads of the sensor, then I printed out an image of the sensor, attached it to cardboard, and clipped the other end of the cardboard, lining each alligator clip up with the sensor pad. Now you don't need alligator clips, but it makes things easier to tap. And you can attach these pads to anything that can convey capacitance. That includes plants, root. coins, fruits, or vegetables, <laughs> or artwork made with capacitive touch paint. So here we see the sensor is attached to the Stemma QT cable, attached to the Pi, just as I demonstrated in the prior video. And there's a speaker attached to this Pi as well. Now, if you want to print a large copy of the sensor that we're using, I have a PDF copy of this in the Google Drive at bit.ly slash circuitpython school files, all lowercase. Just find the file labeled 12 pad gator mpr121 sensor.pdf, right click and download that. And while we're at this Google Drive, let's download these other two folders that have sounds that we'll use in our tutorials. Those are 12 underscore drum underscore sounds and we'll also download beats. We'll use those sounds in our future DJ board video. And then we can minimize the browser. And if your browser doesn't automatically extract the .zip files, just double click on each of these .zip files, they'll become folders. And then you can throw the two zip files into the trash. Next, we're gonna copy those two folders, 12 drum sounds and beats into the Pi directory PI on the Raspberry Pi. So in an earlier video, we showed Mac users how to install Netatalk on their Pi. And if you did this, you should be able to open up the Finder and under locations on the left-hand side of the Finder window, you should be able to find the host name for your Pi. The Pi I'm using now is called JG-PhysComp. So click that. My Pi is already connected, so I have a disconnect button in the upper right-hand corner. But if you have a connect button, that means you need to connect to your Pi. So click that and sign in with the username Pi, and the password should be your Pi's password. But I'm already connected. Now, Windows users, you can use a similar tool like Samba, which you can download online for free. And once we're logged in, what we can do is go to the Pi's Pi directory. Now on the Mac, for some reason, the Pi directory shows up as Pi's home, even though it really is just Pi, P-I. And when you open this up, you might not see all the files that I'm showing here, but head to the Finder and drag the two sound folders that you just downloaded onto your Pi. Make sure that you don't drop the folders into another folder. We want them to be on the root level of this directory. If you have a folder with this name already, it's okay to overwrite it. And when the folders copy over, you should be able to open up each of the individual directories and you'll see 12 WAV files in each one. Now, there are some shorter files in the 12 drum sounds folder. We'll use longer files that are in beats when we play sounds concurrently. Cool. Now, in an earlier tutorial, we showed how to use the MPR-121, but because of the easy interoperability of CircuitPython, we can take the same code we wrote from microcontrollers and run it on the Raspberry Pi. Now, we know from our earlier work with microcontrollers that when we need new libraries in CircuitPython, and that's what we're doing when we import Adafruit underscore MPR-121, that library has all of the special Python commands that let us use this sensor, then we need to make sure that the Adafruit underscore MPR-121 library file is on our board. Now, if you've worked with microcontrollers, you know that we copy over the library file into a folder called lib, but we don't do that on the Raspberry Pi. Instead, we're going to use a command called pip, P-I-P, 
from the terminal prompt and it'll automatically get the library that we want over the internet and it'll install it on the Pi for us. So let me show you how we do this for the Adafruit underscore MPR121 library and pay attention to the steps because the procedure will be very similar for any other CircuitPython libraries that you might need. So Mac users open your terminal program, Windows users probably want to use PuTTY and use the SSH command to log into your Pi. I've already done that. You should know how to do this if you've gone through the prior videos in this series. And we can find the exact command that we need to enter to copy the library file over to our Pi in Adafruit's documentation. Let's look that up on the internet. I'm going to open a browser and I'm going to search for Adafruit MPR 121 Gator Read the Docs, all one word, Circuit Python. Now, what Read the Docs is, is that's the actual website where Adafruit stores its documentation. So I don't want this first option here, that's the Adafruit Learn Guide, but I can skip that and go to the second link. I know I want that link because I can see that it ends in Read the Docs. Io, so that's where the documentation is. If I click this link, I can see that it says supported systems like the Raspberry Pi. Here are the commands to use. And I'm going to select the second option that says to install system wide, which might be required in some cases. It uses sudo. So I'm going to copy this, although you'll notice I'm not copying the part that says pip3. And that's because the default version of pip is now pip3. So I don't need the three at the end. It wouldn't hurt if I copied and pasted this whole line in here. But since I don't need three, I'm just going to go back to the terminal prompt. I'm going to type in sudo space pip space, then paste in what I just copied, and then press return. And it might look like things are hanging for just a bit, but in a few seconds it'll start up, and that's it. So remember, if you need a CircuitPython library on your Raspberry Pi, just search for CircuitPython, the library's name, and the Read the Docs website. Then look for the pip install line that you'll use for the Raspberry Pi, Copy that, paste it into the terminal program, and it should install automatically over the internet. That's it. No need to go to circuitpython.org or copy over any individual files. Just use that command. So I'm going to clear the terminal command by typing clear into the prompt and pressing return, and I can minimize my terminal window and my browser for now. Now, just to remind you how to use the MPR121 in CircuitPython, or to mention this for the first time, if this is new to you, we're going to import the libraries that we need. So remember, we need to import Adafruit underscore MPR121. We also are going to need the board library, but we didn't need to use pip to install board because board is already built into CircuitPython by default. Then we create an I squared C object. We do that the same way we did in the circuit playground in the Arduino with the command board dot I two C all in uppercase with open and close parens after it. Then we create the MRP 121 object passing in the I squared C object that we just created. This MPR 121 class is found inside of Adafruit underscore MPR 121 and that's the library we just imported up here. Now we could call this object anything we want, but we call it touch underscore pad, which is an excellent name for a touchpad. And so now we refer to touch underscore pad in our code anytime we want to interact with our touchpad sensor. Now this touch underscore pad object is actually an indexed collection of 12 pads. Each individual pad, each touch point, is accessible by placing an index value 0 through 11 in square brackets after the name touch underscore pad. So this for loop here will go through all the numbers 0 through 11. Remember how ranges work. We start at zero, we go up to, but we never reach 12. And then we're going to check each touchpad's value property, one at a time, zero through 11. Now the dot value property for an indexed value is going to be either true or false. And it's true if that pad is being touched. And if it is, we're just going to print out, you touched pads. And between the curlies, we're going to pass in the value for i. That's going to be either zero through 11, whichever pad is being touched. And that's it. So let's open up Moo and code this up. So I've opened Moo. If you get this message, could not find attached circuit Python device, that's okay. This is our Raspberry Pi drum machine. And remember what we need to import, board, comma, and also Adafruit underscore MPR 121. Then we'll create our I squared C object with I2C equals board dot, and in all caps, I2C, open and close parens. Then we'll create an object that we'll call touch underscore pad and set that equal to Adafruit underscore MPR 121 dot, and in all caps, MPR 121, passing in the I squared C object that we just created. Then we start our while true loop with while true, always a capital T in true, and always a colon after a while loop. And then our for loop will be 4i in range, and in between parentheses that'll be a 12, also with a colon after that. This loop is going to go through the numbers 0 through 11, that's what i is going to be in each of those iterations, and we're going to check to see if touch underscore pad in brackets i dot value colon, and that dot value property is going to be true if it's touched, and if it is being touched, press return, and on the next line we'll say print, and in parentheses f, this is going to be an 
left string, and in between double quotes, you touched pad, number sign, open and close curly braces, exclamation point, close double quote, close parentheses. And in between the curly braces, we're going to put in the value lowercase i, and that's going to show us which pad number is being touched. So now let's go ahead and save this to our Raspberry Pi. I'm going to double click on the tab up here that says Untitled, but then I'm going to click on the name for my Pi under Locations. Mine is called JG Fizzcomp. Then I'm going to double click on this Pi's home folder. That's actually my Pi folder. So I want to save this program at the base level. I'm going to call this drum underscore machine. Remember when we work on the Raspberry Pi, we don't have to name everything code.py, so we can give it more intuitive names and save lots of different Python programs on our Pi. Then it looked like I closed down my terminal program. So I'm just going to open up my terminal program again. I'm going to SSH into my Pi. Don't put .local if you're on the Boston College campus. Otherwise, add .local, enter your password. Then at the prompt, I can see that I'm logged in. I'm going to type in Python. That will execute a Python program, then space. And then I type in the name of the program I want to execute. I'm going to start typing in DRU, and then I'm going to tab. It fills out drum underscore machine dot Pi, because that's the only thing in this directory that has the name that starts with DRU. I'll press return, and my code starts to run. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's working great. So now I'll stop this with a control C. Don't worry about this message. That's normal when you stop an executing program. And now let's go make some sounds play. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. In an earlier video, I showed you how to play sound using Pi Game, And I saved a demo program to this Raspberry Pi called sound underscore demo dot Pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that program up in another tab by clicking on the load icon. I'm going to find sound demo dot Pi. And when I open this, it opens up in another tab. And now I'm going to raid this program for any code that I want to use to play sound in my drum machine. So I can see right away that I import Pi Game. So I'm going to head back over to Drum Machine. And in my import line, I'm going to say comma, space, and add Pi Game. Then back in Sound Demo, I can also see all of these lines where I worked with sound. First, I created a path variable that had a directory where I play the sounds. And hey, will you look at that? The directory was 12 underscore drum underscore sounds, the same one that I'm going to use. And then underneath that, I also created a list to hold all 12 WAV file names. And how about that? The names are also exactly the same. So I'll copy this list. And then down below, there are three other lines that I want to copy too. Those initialize Pi Game for sound play and set the initial speaker volume. So with this chunk of code highlighted from the path name all the way to the end of where I set the Pi Mixer volume, I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to head back over to my drum machine tab, paste this in just above the while true line, and I've reused a block of code that I know is going to work. And if you want to double check, you can head over to the finder. And yep, I've got a folder called 12 underscore drum underscore sounds. If I double click that, if you want to match up all of these names, those are the exact same names that are in our sound underscore files list. So now let's scroll down to the while true loop. And this is where we want to add code to play sounds when a pad is touched. We're already detecting a touch. So all we need to do is play the sound. So back in sound underscore demo.py, I'm going to grab these four lines here. This first line here loads the sound file, although we're going to have to make a minor change to this. I'll show you that in just a bit. This next one here will play the file we just loaded. And this while loop with a continue will cause the program to wait until a sound is done playing. And that's just to prevent the sound from restarting if your finger is still on the sensor while the sound is playing. So I'm going to copy all four lines. I'm going to head back to Drum Machine, and I'm going to paste these in right after my print statement. Now remember, Python is really picky about indentations, so I'm going to make sure that I tab the first three lines so that they're even with the print statement, and the continue statement should have one more tab. That's looking good. And then finally, that minor change that I mentioned, what we want to do is not add sound file in here. What we're actually going to do if we scroll up is our list is called sound files. And what we want to do is we want to get the index in here. So we'll make sure that this says sound underscore files, and then we'll We'll say bracket I bracket. So if we press on a pad that has a bracket number, like say pad three, then we'll play sound file three. So I no longer need the sound demo. I'm going to click the X to get rid of that tab. And I'm going to click on the save icon. And we've just saved our drum machine to our Raspberry Pi. And I'll command tab over to the terminal program. I'll up arrow twice so that I bring up the command to run the Python program, drummachine.py. And I'll press return. And I see the code runs. No errors so far. Now, one more thing to be careful of. My wires here are a bit sloppy. If any of the metal bits, the alligator clips, or the pieces of the Stemma QT board touch each other, I might short out my board. Now, this won't damage the Raspberry Pi board, but my Pi will restart. I'll lose my network connection, and I'll have to log in again. So be careful if the metal bits are not touching. 
thing. Also, if any of the alligator clip wires are lying on top of each other, sometimes they create some interference that might detect presses that you didn't mean to make. If this was a more professional build, you could spread the wires out and tape them down, or even solder the wires permanently so that you're not using alligator clips. But this is going to be fine for our learning example. Now let's start tapping those alligator clips so we can bring on the funk. Well, you are rocking, Pythonista. You got STEM QT working in CircuitPython on a Raspberry Pi to detect capacitive touch and play sound. Fantastic work. And if you enjoyed this, please drop a like and consider a subscribe. That'll keep me motivated, offer up even more content. And if you tweet at me with a photo or video of your build with the hashtag BuiltWithProfG, you'll be entered into the weekly sticker giveaway. I'll mail that sticker anywhere in the world if you're selected. Now keep hacking and make something awesome.